Good day, everyone. My name is Bemiga Olamikon, and you are on to GTV Africa some months ago. Precisely 101 or 100 days, I, I came here to talk to you about a man, the new man that just started pushing the leadership of Anam. I promised that I'll be back to let you know much about what he's doing. Today with me, I have some other colleague in the house to find out from him what has he done within 100 days. You know, everyone always likes to check what have I done within 100 days? But today with me, I have my colleague in the house to do justice to what is expected to be done. Ima Elimike is in the house with me. My colleague in the banker paper. And I have the lady in the house, Grace. But let me not waste your time. Let me bring everyone is expected to hear from him after 100 days. Reverend. Nice to have you, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome to this forum. Sir, go a lot over the world. Follow the live streaming from GTV Africa, where you are crowned of Anam. Shortly, a day or two after that, we came down here to find out what you intend to do. You are really doing. Not, but I'm not going to say that in your own office. What? Well, thank you. Um, you know, it has become to look at uh, the performance of a chief executive after the first hundred days. In um, it's not that time for sufficient to define completely the what you have set out to achieve but it could be a pointer to what to expect in the days ahead and so it has become a very important yardstick and i will say that uh, it has been a busy period for me when we came in i was i was replacing i, I was stepping into the shoes of a predecessor who had done so much for and in a very short time like this entire building where we are now was acquired under his watch my predecessor and under his watch and then was licensed to run i came in barely how many months after the license that's what calling on me to make sure that this university takes off on a good footing so i, I had my work cut out for me and uh, over this period, we have uh, done quite a lot. In this first months, um, let's go to first begin with the university issue. We have tried to give the university a firm footing for takeoff. Provided the funds, provided the support, right bring this resources, enable us run um, a, a university, uh, but beyond that, you see, the the, the university was better midwifed. By That's the Nigeria College of Accountancy, which we are authorized under our laws to run. 
yeah, I usually say self regulating because I talked about the college, and over the period of 40 years, it has been one great success story. The college has provided much of the backing for what we are doing in Annan, trained the personnel, provided the funds for and given a, 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 a brand image that is very peculiar. In fact, someone said that the college, the college system of trade is an accountancy globally. Not once the college it would be unwise to sacrifice a 40 year success story on the altar of a new um, venture you know how well it's going to do so we have decided to handle the two to carry them along and uh, that's one area where we are experiencing quite a lot of uh, activity like in the past uh, within month of my of a new admin building for the college we decided to shift the college out from where it was it was actually the site of the college that gave birth to the university and the two cannot coexist on the same set of uh, facilities or else we run into problems with the regulating authorities so the college had to shift on a separate over 40 hectares of virgin land beside the University. That's where the college is taking off. So we've already commissioned a, a, an admin building, and we are hopeful that before it runs out, the next three, four months, we have an imposing admin building, three floors there. That is a complex structure with two lifts and multiple offices. We're also constructing a new gate into the college. Um, a fence for clear demarcation of the two. Uh, facilities so that you will know that where the thing so we've also gone further to strengthen the 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 the, the, the fiber of what we're doing as a professional body when we came in initially with the, the covid hangover of the covid uh, period we could <coughs> go on with our mandatory program of Anand. Two things have sustained Anand in the past years. The and our MCPD program, Mandatory Continuing Professional Development. A program we started in 1996 under Baba Odumero. Uh, blessed memory. Dr. J.K. Odumero. So that's that uh, uh, um, uh, we are already in of the COVID era. Um, we needed to organize happily. Just a few uh, weeks ago, barely two weeks ago, we had our MCP program here in uh, Abuja, and um, it was a roaring success. Well, I don't think since I joined Anna, we've ever seen anything quite like that. The attendance was just uh, marvelous. Um, so that provided us with a call. The, right now, as we are here, our branches are holding a retreat. We are scheduled to hold it at Jaws. Then this uh, eruption of uh, violence in Jaws over the past weekend. So we had to quickly strategize and, and you know, redirect the program to uh, those of our members. Because they had to go through just to come here. So they couldn't come again. We decided to convert it into a, a virtual stroke, physical, a hybrid meeting. So that people can watch, partake, part, make contributions from their bases. So we, we are getting on. This morning again, I was with the CEO. On our ICT readiness as a body. A couple of uh, months ago, the International Federation of Accountants, IFAC, administered digital readiness assessment on us. And we 
were not our performance was not satisfactory so we knew that we had to do something so i said we are going to i was <laughs> declaring an emergency so that on this issue of ICT, we must break out. Already, we are making quite an impact. The college appeal to reach bars across the nation, across the nation, and across our nation, so that members can apply from outside Nigeria, apply online, registered online, online, let times online. We are driving. They receive their certificates online too. Definitely, you can. I, why not? Because we are saying we are coming to that position. One of our twinning partners, the CPL of Ireland, we were talking with them a couple of months ago, and I listened to their CEO talk, and he said they had come to a point where they had virtually completely digitalized their operations. Can you imagine a chief executive officer who said he went to? His office only once in a month. It's only one person was at a particular point in time. Yet nothing was left undone. And so I said, what is their secret? That's one of the things we, we want to get at. So that we will be in the vanguard of what is happening in these times. That's our... That's one of the points we are also driving. We are working on. So... Uh, I don't want to go into the issues of uh, what we are doing concerning our staff. Because immediately I came in, one of the things I did was I set up a, a com I called it a committee on establishment matters. Because I discovered that there was of disenchantment with certain things about the way uh, operations were going on. So, but go around. Would complete for eight years, no problem. Some people came in two years they have been promoted, after other two years promoted. I hate injustice. And anywhere I see injustice beckons on me. So I had to step in, set up, look through all of it. The report is ready. And I was just telling um one the, the, the secretary of that committee that the white paper on the committee report must be out know where they stand in other, in other words deal with people fairly and then mobilize them to contribute their best we are also beginning to open up our you know we were very imposing house freehold it wasn't a matter of it wasn't a rented apartment then we saw me uh, so I put, we were renting a, a, an office at a, the back of uh, is it back of agriculture sixth floor that's where we just rented the entire sixth floor then as god we have it under professor mainoma we obtained this place we acquired this place so we now moved to this place we are we are we acquired this property but what do you do with lagos an imposing build from the sky of our own efforts and so we came to the conclusion that we need to have regional offices. If we are going to take the profession to the people, then let's have regional offices in Lagos, in Enugu, in Kano. Then plus the one we have in Abuja and in Jos. With this, we will be able, and already we are implementing our seven center examination plan. Our examinations now take place in seven centers across. But that's only a first step. The next step is where individuals will stay out of their homes and take these exams under the uh, uh, using technology. They will take exams and um, turn in the results. So we we have a busy period. Um, of course, has been financed. Again, we are putting together some tools in order to reach out, you know, um, to uh, uh, um, encourage people to invest in what we are doing. We are not, we are not just asking people to give us free you know. We are asking people to become stakeholders in what we are doing for the future of our nation. So that's what we are driving at. Again, I was just talking with the director general of the college, uh, 
Dr. Kayode, first one. We just there's a, a yeah, we have a corporate social responsibility in um Basa local government where we there was pharmacy or clinic serving a community that gone into so much disrepair. He sent the pictures to us and said, What do we do? The board of governors now we as of last week we turned the sword to begin a new construction of a new clinic there. I don't want even to you know train research centers in accounting in how many universities six seven eight and we're going to add more this administration and in subsequent administration so you can see that um, yeah. it's been a very busy period i wish i could cover effectively everything we have done in the past 100 days we are just getting started well beyond this uh, what about the challenges that you've been facing since uh, the of office of very important <laughs> challenge well um challenges um okay look at this we were all geared for a retreat in jaws and suddenly from nowhere crisis and we, we had to reshadow at some cost because the members were already were, were going to use uh, the college they were not going to pay for accommodation and suddenly it no longer works. So, they did not plan to pay for accommodation, so they didn't have the money. So we bear it. And this is at a time we're already complaining that we are uh, cash trapped. And back in the East, too, um, you know, I problem with all the uh, advancements they make. <clears throat> suddenly, you don't go out uh, at certain times of. Uh, and having um, this professional body, I go to to my base in the east. I come here. Suddenly, is disrupted by movements. But then it is the reality of the types in which we are in. How I wish we'll have a governance structure uh, where nobody will have us to complain, and uh, we will meet everybody's needs and fulfill everybody's desire. But that's, that may be uh, uh, something that dwells in the realm of <clears throat> so I, I think that's um, a little bit of a, there may be more more challenges again some individuals I was telling them today where I, when I was addressing the branches I said please I will make mistakes and I said I have I will make excuses for myself I will make mistakes I may offend people but I want you to know that um, it's not because I want to offend people. Uh, I mean well, but that I will definitely make mistakes. I am apologizing ahead of time before the mistakes happen. Okay, sir. You are, you are personality in the forensic uh, investigation. What, uh, what extent have you gone in achieving this uh, initiative? Reminding me, I told you that there's no way I can remember everything we've done. Uh, we birthed forensic, uh, a body for on forensic accounting and fraud prevention. When we started, we decided to go beyond the ordinary forensic. We said accounting, fraud money. Because if you are just stopping with forensic accounting, you will now narrow it only to accountants. But with fraud management, Crimin uh, criminologists, police uh, investigators, all kinds of people can come under that, you know, to fight fraud. So that's what we still work on. Even the background. We wanted initially to bring the College of uh, Fraud Examiner uh, US to come and we take their exams and be, and be certified by them. And they said, no way that they will that you must come to them, be taught by them, examined by them, and prepared by them. So we knew that that was not a good, uh, uh, you know, that was a no good area. What do we then do? One of our members, uh, Dr. Abuchu Buju, he was he originated this idea. But we we have 
practice these things. Why don't we replicate what they do there here? And so we started. Where do we get a forensic toolkit lab? There was no. So he went and went to a computer lab in a, 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 a jobs and recondition, reconfigured them to suit forensic. Set of brought out from that place, like people in the surgery, yeah, I mean, in a theater doing, a, you know, uh, operations. There's a lot of things. Took them to the uh, court for training, because at times EFCC, ICPC, they carry out very extensive investigation, discover fraud, but they can't prosecute it because there are rules of evidence you must observe. And so we say it's not enough to just be accountants. It's not enough to crime. You must prepare for the court. So we introduced the moot court trial. Uh, the deputy director of the Lega, um, uh, law school graciously had uh, the moot court trial here in, uh, in the, um, at Kefi. Set up the court, learned how to package your, you know, what you've done for the courts. And we've come quite some long way. And then gradually we a pioneer chairman of the board of uh, uh, trustees for forensic uh, um, for, for a forensic uh, training body. Uh, the time came that a presidency of Anand had to step handed over. The new person is Dr. Elias Sugeshimbaki. He became the new um, and then this uh, it took a different turn. Is now the Chartered Institute of Forensics and Fraud Examiners, and uh, with a, with an exco, he is now the president, vice president, and all that. So he's there. In this past, in within my hundred days, hundred days in office, we gave them a strong support to go ahead with what they are trying to set up. Um, uh, a forensic academy. Here, forensic academy is where you have the forensic toolkits lab, where you have training in different aspects of forensic work, fingerprinting, recovery of data from chart documents, and things like that. Set up a forensic, train people in that area. And uh, they even acquired property to that effect here in Abuja. So they're working. Guaranteed a loan they took from the bank, 200 million. Not a but it is, it's an, it's a, an indication of how much we support what they are doing. We are putting our money where we thought. So the forensic issue, we are now raising it. Because that's one of the major banes of this nation. Corruption, fraud, everybody condemns for corruption. Yet it continues to threaten. I ask the question, It down, it bounces up. Everybody is condemning it, yet it's thriving. Go to the church, is there. Go to the mosque, is there. Go to the office, is there. In fact, there was this uh, anti corruption agency that uh, was really set up by some individuals to fight corruption. And before you could say Jack Robinson, they were already fighting among themselves how to loot what they had collected. Meanwhile, they're supposed to fight corruption. So, where do you get it there? Try to do and that someday I think we will get it. We'll get it. Well, you have a solution to I'm not saying that we have a, a there's a lock, we will, you know, turn or a button we can press and corruption will appear. It would, but it has to. You see, one of the things, one of the reasons why corruption thrives is that the deterrent factor is not work. And when you see people go to jail for doing what is wrong, when you see people punished for offending this, the, uh, the laws of people will learn. That's the way the Bible puts it. It says, because the judgment a sin is expeditiously executed, the children of men will never learn to live rightly. 
until you implement what has been and then once you come to God, the law you remember that this is my brother your brother is not wrong if you, you know the, the one so I think it was Professor Patrick Lumumba of um, Kenya that told a very funny story in uh, it was in a man who got a job in the United Nations and was sacked for embezzling money the day he arrived in Kampala they were cheering him and cheering him that he not only stole him and uh, they held him if we held them how do we stop the thing from happening but if somebody discovers that he does certain things society looks down on it the church look, the church looks down on it everybody turns their back on it it, it will end but so long as we enjoy the roots and the largesse that comes from it there's no way corruption will end so the forensic now who do you think that should be tricked to make it work i'm primarily accountants like I said, not only accountant with others. You see, why I say primarily, there's no way you can embezzle funds in an organization without teaming up with the accountant. If a principal wants to embezzle the school funds, he will make friends with the boss. On him, just keep appointing who is the uh, accountant general, somebody they like. And if they hear that you are very principled and very um I know a lady in one of uh, the South States. The governor called and said, look, I like you. I would have given you this job. Too much. Your principles are very unbending. So I cannot appoint you. I did not appoint her. And that was the end of it. She was next in line. We made that, given that so, <clears throat> if the people who ought to be, be in the norm are put there, I think to some extent we'll begin to apply the bricks in some of these things. Yeah. Coming. Yes. Having together with the university and others, how do you think people from different zones could to benefit writing the Having their been a pretty uh, movement from one place to the other. Do you think there are other ways you need to have to? Um, interviews we had with the CPA of Ireland. One of the things that caught my attention was that they said they run a using technology and they invigilate using. There are our members, uh, Professor Adebayo Adejola. He's the white knight he's into. He has a setup that makes it possible for for us to administer that type of exams without any problems. You'll be allowed to write it in your father's house. So how long will it take? But the software itself will police you. How long will it take us to get it? We're already working on it. Council, talk to the committee. They bought the idea because we want to get to a point that all these uh, and you see they, they designed it. And if examine three parts, the first part is like a multi multiple um, um, um uh, objective type. You answer and the uh, after the answering. The result is generated immediately. That may be about. Then the last studies, once we must meet and back. Now all this, are you sit or the exams, and there is there is a breath. You know, the, the the software monitors you. You turn of the scope of the uh, of the. Uh, uh, so yeah, it will tell you too far. It gives you a query, mm -hmm. and if if it requires, yes, you are monitored, not by a human being. So, and whatever you do, somebody is out there is taking notes. That 
this will help uh, leakage of uh, it will. Exam it will. And, uh, questions. It, it will. But one of the things we have always said, tell my life, is the integrity of your exams determines the respectability of your profession or organization. So we don't joke with that. Okay. With this now, I, I want to know, are you going to bring private organization, the private sector into Anam? Is that possible for you? Uh, to bring her, what do you mean by private sector? Private sector, we're already, we're already, reaching, we're already reaching out to private sector. We're already working with them. You see, the thing is this. I can start had a charter in 1965. We had that only in 1990. About almost a difference. So that has given them a head start. We are not competing with them. In fact, we've always said it, and I say it without any equivocation, that ICANN is our elder brother. And we have no problems with them. The only problem we have is when the elder brother says he doesn't want the younger brother. And that's where we have a quarrel. And when they became members of ICANN, and at times they come back with a chip on their shoulder, because they're giving them a monopoly of accounting knowledge. When I ask one of them, say, so because you're now an ICANN member, you know more accounting than I do? And he says, sir, you're making it personal. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what it is. So, we, 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 are not, we are not in any way quarreling with all, any of these things. All we are saying is we grow together and um, make them part for the betterment of our nation. How many accountants do we have in this? If every registered business outfit has one accountant, Nigeria would need over 400,000 accountants. Between Anan and, and, and ICANN, we don't even have up to how many? 40, but maybe we don't, we don't have up to 100. So that's a serious shortfall. Make sure that we train them. Our orientation is to make sure that the, the, the people are well trained before we come in. We don't go to enter our students. Houses, no. We design it, we set the curriculum, we tell them what we want, and we try to build those into them. And when we examine them, we hold them responsible for those things. Speaking on that, speaking on that uh, in, in regards to um, the no competition between ICANN and Anand, yeah. how would you convince, because there's still this, this grouse among people, accountants who want to take a professional course, how would you convince someone who's already had a pre-planned mind that ICANN is higher? What are the cash? What to draw an international cost instead of ICANN? Going with the fact that you have said you people are not in the competition, that like you still regard Anan ICANN as your senior brother. Yes. How I even went to when you were asking about taking the private sector into ICANN, yeah. and I said private sector is up as much as. You see, on the day we were um, given the IFAC recognition, the president of IFAC declared that we are to be the leading BAO in management. It doesn't mean that we are in private sector. So when people, when the student faces this choice, where do I go to? I can or Anand? What we do, in fact, um, in my case, we just had a, a, a valedictory lecture of uh, one of our professors, uh, and he was uh, he's, a, he's an ICANN professor. He has ICANN roots. The same university. Background. I professors the same institution. Uh, let me quote what he said. He was very, very grateful that I was in that university. And because of that, there was no battle between ICANN and Anan. We strive to show that if you are better than me, prove it by the quality of work you're doing. I brought, I remember I brought in once a, 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 an, a fellow of ICANN. 
to come and teach a very technical course in my in my department when I was a head of department and he could not handle <laughs> if I give the page they didn't want to teach them anymore but he was a fellow so there are good accountants and there are bad accountants both in an and and is get the poor people so and i can i, I can dominate seem to dominate in the private sector and then seems to dominate in the public sector but we are catching up let me tell you why we are catching up when we started the people didn't know that um, we could go as far as we have gone i used to say that when i started they said Anand will destroy standards will bastardize standards. but today Anand has redefined standards i have this responsibility to encourage to uh, develop accounting in a number of uh, african countries so, um, uh, is it Botswana? Um, we are helping them and exporting our brand of training for them. When we went to Marrakesh, Morocco, for the ACOA, African Congress of Accountants, when the Director General, like Dr. Kayode, talked about what we are doing in the college, one of us stood up and made a comment. He said, By one act over of the problems of training accountants in developing countries, what we had done with college. So that, that's what we have to offer. But it, it remains for the industry to, and uh, the, uh, those who consume. Some may say, no, I can is better. Whichever one you have, what? You see, when I can start it, the emphasis was not on academic qualification. It's all you need to do with even with your school start. You can take foundation. After foundation, you go to intermediate. After intermediate, you go to professional. We said no. We said, we said no. You go to the University of Polytechnic, get your HND and BSc. Even without the professional, you still survive on those qualifications. Get and we let you professionalize you. Can you imagine bringing over 3,000 You don't teach them anything. You will change their outlook. Because they will come from this is ah, how did your teacher teach this? What, how did you people handle this? And from comparing notes. And that's what we have done. Bring them together at the college and then groom them. So they now learn what that's why they how they what they have become. In lighter notes, everybody works and has the time off, right? So what would you say you do to relax? <laughs> I just when I was a student, I had a very regimented life. Classroom hostel. And uh, when I came into the world of work, I tried to go beyond that. Uh, I bought a table tennis board, which is by to be played table tennis. I tried sometimes I gave quite exercising so that I won't be too fat. But the fat refused to go. <laughs> <laughs> Me, once I don't see the result in a short time, I give up and look for another option. So um, I used to be a very good swimmer. I abandoned that one too. But uh, all I do now is essentially wake up in the morning, task at the work, come out, sit, watch TV, go to church, and uh, I go and uh, minister in church. So that, that's all. And um, I hardly ever, I wish I had other pursuit. I walk from time to time. Around, around. <laughs> and that, that takes me to the question of is Anand job affecting your family? Professor, well, you're being a professor 
and your wife. Mm. Incidentally, I came in onto office on April 24th, 2020. A couple of months before, October 14th, I retired from the university. You know, we retire as professors at the age of 70. So that tells you I'm not a young man. So I, I, I retired. So I'm no longer under to go to the office. My office surrender the key because there are things I don't do. When you leave office, leave office. Don't leave office and hold on to the thing. So I mean, the key I left. I, I don't, I've not gone there again since that time. And um, May of this year, I was uh, given, a, I gave my valedictory lecture where the, my department bid me farewell. And uh, here am I. So uh, I don't even have to now. People ask me to deliver a, a talk. I refuse. You know why? I tell them that all my life I have delivered uh, enough papers. I don't know. Um, and the, the compendium. When I was students brought all my writings in the past how many years? Um, even the other one. This one is a first script. The over 180 academics all over the country wrote in papers just to celebrate my retirement. It was probably let's say the one they compared all my publications they really you know i was dumbfounded by what i did almost double the size produced them and then it was so heavy and brought they celebrated it on the day my valedictory address so i have finished my writing but that remains uh, uh that's the pendium you can see them these two were presented the same day. Because this one, uh, all my writings, all my writings, from my entire academic life, we gave it a title Values and Ethics in Leadership and Governance, a challenge. So, and these are just my writings. Then these are scripts from academics and friends across the country. So, and they call this one governance and professionalism. It's just blue. So with this, I say I finished my work. So um, I, I'm, I now say that all the time I have, I devote to Anan, the work of God. And when I finish, I don't know when God will call me back home, but I prepare my children. I say I can go anytime when God wants me to go. I have no problems. With I have lived a a life that I'm very grateful to God for. At some point, I wasn't too sure I would stay. I would stay till. So when the time, I feel very grateful. <laughs> it is you have said, you have touched a very rough sp uh, spot. <laughs> you know, the first time I heard of challenges was about 1990. What now? I wasn't in Anan. I wasn't in Icon. I was just a, a, a lecture, a, a lecture in the university, and somebody told me and said, and I can remember, he said, we have found a formula that will finish an. I said, what's that formula? He said, it is the Institute of Taxation that by the time it becomes operational, that they will reduce the Anan certificate. What I, said, I didn't know what I'm saying. So. I can, you know, midwife the establishment of Charter Institute of Taxation. Initially, we were not bothered. The sense that I 